Hi everyone. Hi. This is Introduction to Metaphysics, part three. And we're going to call this one three. False Humility. And if you've got any questions, let me know. Mm. So um, in part two, we went over um, dreams and e evolution. Um, and um, how the, um, the, the material world came about through the actions uh, of units of consciousness, or CUs, uh, aware eyes energy. Moreover, the instant creation is never ending. The world is always coming into existence, and each present moment brings in its own uh, built in past along with it. Now, there is nothing more pompous than false humility. Many people who consider themselves truth seekers and spiritual are filled with it. <laughs> We met some people like that. Mm. They often use religious terms to express themselves. They will say, I am nothing but the Spirit of God moves through me. And if I do any good, it is because of God's Spirit and not my own. Or, I have no ability of my own, only the power of God has any, any ability. Now, in those terms, you are the power of God manifested, aren't you? Mm. Yeah, you're the creator, though nothing can be created. You are not powerless, to the contrary. Through your being, the power of God is strengthened, for you are a portion of what he is. You are not simply an insignificant, innocuous lump of clay through which he has decided to show himself. Didn't you mention this before? Something, uh, you know, you just form this clay and blow life into it, but nothing can be uh, created. Uh, uh, oh, that's from the Bible, isn't it? Basic information before leaving Earth. Mm. A bit late then. Here you are, um, here are... You are he manifesting as you. <laughs> you are as legitimate as he is. You are a part of God then. He is also a part of you. And in denying your own worth, you end up denying him as well. I do not like to use the term he, meaning God, since all that is, is the origin of not only all sexes, but of all realities. In some of which sex as you think of it does not exist. How about that? Mm. True religion is not repressive, as life itself is not. When Christ spoke, he did so in the context of his times, using the symbolism and vocabulary that made sense to a particular people at a particular period of history in your terms. It was always the men that were in control, wasn't it? Mm. So, of course, they're going to manifest, uh, you uh, know, oh, deity, what male, am I? Yeah. It's going to be male, isn't it? He began with their beliefs, and using their references try to lead them into freer realms of understanding with every translation the bible basic information before leaving earth and it's no good when you've left earth has changed its meaning being does that mean that those that interpreted it has altered it as they've gone along yeah being interpreted in the language of the times as well well, it, well why would they need to keep reinterpreting it if the, when it was written by whoever if it was correct the first time around well it's um would you, wouldn't you think it's for control over others' mind, body and spirit complex? Mm, absolutely. Christ spoke in terms of good and bad spirits because these represented the people's beliefs. The very term, love your neighbour as yourself, Matthew 19, 19, if anybody wants to check it up, and it's also in Mark, in Mark 12, 31, was an ironic statement, for in that society no man loved their neighbour. Mm. But distrust him heartedly. Much of Christ's humour has been lost, therefore. In the Sermon on the Mount, the phrase to the effect that the meek shall inherit the earth, and you can find that in Matthew 5.5, 5, if anybody wants to look it up, has been grossly misinterpreted. Christ meant you form your own reality. Those who think thoughts of peace will find themselves safe from war and dissension. Sounds good to know. It sounds good, yeah. Let's all be free from war. They will be untouched by it. They will escape and indeed inherit the earth. Thoughts of peace, particularly in the middle of chaos, take great energy. People who, who can ignore the physical evidence of wars and mm -hmm. purposely think thoughts of peace will triumph. This is law of attraction stuff. It's like, um, it's very similar to Hicks, isn't it? Yeah. Abraham Hicks. Yeah. But it's, uh, again, it's all about metaphysicality. And this is why we're doing introductions to it. Mm -hmm. So have a look into Abraham Hicks if you're uh, interested in that. Brilliant, brilliant she is. Law of attraction. Esther Hicks, isn't it? Yes. But in your terminology, the word meek has come to mean spineless, inadequate, lacking energy. In Christ's time, the phrase about the meek inheriting the earth implied the energetic use of affirmation of love and peace. 
The Christ entity was too great to be contained in any one man, obviously. Or for that matter, in any one time. So the man you think of Christ was not crucified. Yeah? Nor was the idea of self-sacrifice then involved. The myth became more real than the physical event, which of course is the case in many so-called important historical events. But even the myth was distorted. God did not sacrifice his dearly beloved son by allowing his son to be physical. The Christ entity decide, des desired to be born in space and time to straddle creaturehood in order to serve as a leader and to translate certain truths in physical terms. I'm, I'm trying to use just the basic language here without pickling it, okay? I know we've gone over words and stuff, so this is just so that you can normally <coughs> excuse me, understand like you've been taught. Each of you survived physical death. Wow, we. Mm. What's inside the intel, the memory <coughs> banks, and all the uh, previous incarnations, the higher self, the oversoul? Just, just a second. Did you all hear that? You survived physical death. You're immortal. So, don't worry about it. What you have to do, basically, if you rediscover nothing, there you'll find everything. And, and uh, coming back slightly to the law of attraction, if you are worrying about it, you're just bringing it towards you. So if there's something that you don't like, don't pay any other attention. In fact, think of something opposite, something good that you want. And you'll just start steering away from what you don't want towards what you do want. And law of attraction dictates that it will be there waiting for you when you're ready for it. Do you know, often in the past, uh, I've myself included and other friends, you'd see somebody walking down the street and you'd think something bad about them. They might be wearing mm. baggy jeans or something like that. Now I turn it around, I don't think any bad about anybody. I turn it around and have a laugh. A friend of mine <laughs> said, I wish they wouldn't wear their jeans like that. And I said, I'm pleased they do. <laughs> You're talking about that where they have the other jeans down yeah, halfway yeah. down the ball. That is so funny. Oh, it makes me laugh every time it puts a smile on my face for the rest of the day. So anyway, uh, getting back to uh, metaphysics. Yes, after a brief interlude. But each of you survive physical death and we'll have a very interesting conversation after uh, we do survive physical death about mm. this the man who was crucified knew beyond all doubt and he sacrificed nothing Jesus arranged for a substitute to be crucified in place of Christ himself you can see it was a drama but if you believe in it then it actually, that drama existed mm -hmm. But it didn't, act, didn't actually happen. Of course, th there's also the fact that there are some really naughty uh, beings on this planet that believe in the devil and all that sort of stuff. Well, where do you get the devil? Well, exactly. This it's is a what, fictitious character but this is what I'm book. coming to. Because they believe it so much, when they do uh, depart this reality, they're going to meet the devil. <laughs> yeah, of course, and uh, they exchange gifts with uh, God and everybody else, and then we all kiss each other and we, we explain for all we not all one. Mm -hmm. we sh you should do that talk again about the uh, where Muhammad met, um, not now, but you know you know what the, the one I mean. Mm -hmm. I normally keep this reserved for close friends. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we'll continue. The substitute was a personality seemingly deluded, but in his delusion he knew that each person is resurrected. He took it upon himself to become the symbol of this knowledge. A lot of this ancient knowledge is kept from you and only given to certain other selves in order to control our mind, body and spirit complex. Well, in fact, actual fact it was not meant for the likes of us. It was no. meant for them to keep control of the likes of us. That's why we've looked into the quadrivium. Oh, we're going to give you some more quadrivium in a, in a future video. I just need mm. to uh, scan through it and make my own notes. A man called Christ was not crucified. In the overall drama, however, it made little difference who was in fact in your terms and what was not for the greater reality transcends facts and creates them you have free will you could interpret the drama as you wished it was given to you its great creative power still exists and you use it in your own way even changing your own symbolism as your beliefs change but the main idea is the affirmation that the physical being the self that you know is not annihilated with death this could so everybody is sorry to tell you you're all immortal not the physical bodies but with the intel that's inside and you're a fragment of all that is all that ever was and all that ever can be you can't be annihilated you can't be destroyed there was no beginning so there's no end and, and this, then, is, this is often why you find when people die they die with a smile on the face because they realize they're going back to where they've originally come from and whatever they've had here is no longer hold on let's just check the time yeah we're okay yeah no time 
the whole concept of God, the good point, the whole concept of God the Father as given by Christ was indeed a New Testament. The male image of God was used because of the sex orientation of the times, which we were talking about. Mm. But beyond this, the Christ personality said, the kingdom of God is within, among you. <laughs> so, not only are you immortal, but also you are the creator of all that is. Or a fragment of, of the creator of creation of all that is, but all that is was never created. All of this is dr was dreamed, and all that is didn't realize at first with no time this happened in no time or space that it was all that is all that it was and all that it can be mm. so it thought of the th other th other th other selves <laughs> so we're the other selves of all that is and we have our own thoughts and dreams and affirmations it's a bit like the the story i told uncle Mohammed in egypt mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll do that again for these sometime I know we mention Egypt a lot, but a lot of this stuff has been plagiarised from ancient Egyptian times, especially when you go and look back to the Zero Dynasty, which we've spoken about before, uh, and, and Neymar. I'll continue. The whole concept of God the Father as given by Christ was indeed a New Testament. The male image of God was used because of the orientation of the times, but because this Christ um, personally said, the kingdom of God is within you, among you. And you can find that in Luke 17.21 if anybody wants to look it up. In a certain way, the Christ personality was a manifestation of the evolution of consciousness, <laughs> leading the race, although there's no race, by the way, beyond the violent concepts of the times and altering behave, behavior that has prevailed to that time, and even now, of the wars. Hmm. Any more? Plenty more, but I think we should do it in another part. Okay. That was part three, possibly, of um, an introduction to metaphysics, and it's called false humility. We'll do false, false uh, introduction to metaphysics, false humility, part two, to later. Thanks for listening, and if you've got any questions, don't bother us, <laughs> because we're very qualified for this, because we don't know anything at all, do we? No, and you've got to start off at the zero point. When you realise that you can actually say no to things, it's amazing. We should set be saying no to a lot more things. No. Correct. Because nothing is known in the known universe. But we love you. Dog's coming for us. Let's get out of here.